first of all, um, how are you doing in general? I know it's, it's been it's been a crazy period. I'd love to get your your smile and I'd love to get your take on how life has been. Well, it, you know, this is a, a an interesting, challenging time that we're all going through. I, I I hope that there's a silver lining in all this. That that uh, that the time that that people have had uh, by not going to work uh, has given them an opportunity to look inside and and uh, perhaps become a little bit less materialistic, and more importantly. Uh, to look at our nation and look at the racial and social injustice that we're uh, continuing to live through uh, that's been going on my entire life. And, and of course, our grandparents and great grandparents and great great grandparents that since the birth of the nation, we've been sort of struggling with the ideas of what uh, a free society looks like, uh, uh, you know, with, with uh, tolerance for all and justice for all. So, um, I, I, I think that this has given us the opportunity for young people and old people and all people to go out into the streets and, and demand that kind of justice. So if there is a silver lining that comes from this COVID, this fever that, that is infecting us, uh, that, that that might be the positive outcome. Very good. And I, and I, always, I dig, I follow you and I dig all your intelligent comments and arguments and it, you're always a, a pleasure to have that voice. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, just want to get want to do this first because you're the one that turned me on to this <laughs> on a on a sad carpet some years back. You told me I need to go check that out. So I think that night I went on eBay or whatever and and found it. And yeah. that is to say, that's in service of of this right now, which is kind mm -hmm. of a great period. If you could just put into words the the diary and the new release and how that's it's such a, a passion for you and such a great thing. Well, the, uh, the 4K restoration, the Ultra HD restoration, I have to tip my hat to Leon Vitale. Uh, there's a terrific documentary about Leon called Film Worker. And, and uh, Leon was Stanley Kubrick's assistant. He was an actor in Barry Lyndon. He's the one who shot Ryan O'Neill and where he ends up losing his leg. Uh, Lord Bullington he played. But Stanley and he, began an amazing relationship with one another. And there's not an aspect of filmmaking that Leon doesn't really understand. And, and he's been responsible for all the restorations of Kubrick's work. And the, what is captured on a film negative, uh, when you make a positive of that negative, a 35 millimeter film print, there's a lot of information that gets lost. And so to be able to go into the negative and frame by frame, pull out information uh, that's on that negative. If you've seen Full Metal Jacket 20 times, uh, this will be like, like you've never seen the film. It's, it's an extraordinary experience to see the detail that Leon Vitale was able to pull out of those negatives. Um, <clears throat> so when I was working with Stanley Kubrick, uh, a friend of mine gave me an old Roloflex camera and, and he said, you should bring this. It could be a great way to break the ice with Stanley because of his photography background. If you know how to use this old camera, <clears throat> it could start a friendship. So I, I taught myself how to use the roll of flex and just fell in love with that camera. And Stanley said, listen, if you're gonna take pictures on my set, this is the camera you should get. And he encouraged me to go buy this Minolta autofocus, auto everything camera. And I, I didn't like that camera, but I fell in love with this roll of flex. And the important part of what I'm saying is that Stanley said, if you're going to take pictures on my set, because that was unheard of to, to be allowed to photograph uh, a Kubrick film on, on, on location, on set. So I had all these amazing photographs that I took and shared them with Kubrick and the other actors. And then uh, I kept a diary because I was playing a journalist and uh, so when I wanted to do something to publish the photographs, uh, the, the publisher said, you're gonna have to tell a story about them. And I said, well, I kept a diary while I was making the film. And he said, do you feel comfortable transcribing that? And I said, okay. And, uh, and what, what was revealed was this, because this, I think it was 10 years or more after, maybe 15 years after the fact, was it was this incredible portrait of a, of a artist as a young man, this young actor going off to work with arguably the most 
amazing film director to ever get behind a motion picture camera. And I, I, it's just, so the reason I love the diary is it's not me today reflecting on what it was like to work with Stanley Kubrick. It's a day-to-day -day account of that young, young man who, who went off to uh, work with Kubrick. And it's, it's fascinating for everyone that one loves the film, loves Kubrick and loves your work. It's a great document that I, I know people are really enjoying, so. Thank you. Yeah. It's free right now. The, 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 uh, there's an iPad app for, because you, on the back of your book, there's a serial number and there's only, that's it. There's not gonna be any more. I wanted to make a piece of art that people could collect. Yeah. And uh, so this young genius, Adam Rakoff from Apple Computers, uh, turned it into an iPad app, and uh, it's 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 amazing. It's kind of like what Leon Vitali did with the 35 millimeter print of Full Metal Jacket. Adam Rakoff did with the materials that were inside the book. So great, so great, to and it's free. It's free to all your listeners right now. It's free. We'll make we'll make sure everyone knows about that. So that's pretty awesome. Very cool. And now talk about um, something else that's um, very timely and exciting is, is your film Foster Boy and. Um, the excitement for you to be in this and why you were passionate about playing this guy. When they sent me the script, I, I didn't really know that much about the foster care system. Um, because of gun violence, uh, I was, when I was in my mother's womb, I'm the youngest of seven, uh, my brother Russell and my sister Elizabeth, uh, they were really my cousins. And because of gun violence, uh, domestic violence, we ended up adopting them. So I never really thought about that much about adoption because they were with me my entire life. And I didn't ever think of them as not being my brother and sister, but there's so many young children, young adults in our country that live in the foster care system. And once you begin to uh, understand there are great foster care parents out there, but it's privatized, like the privatization of our prisons. And that's not the way it should be done. You know, we, it, people shouldn't be making money from pe people being incarcerated in prisons, just as people shouldn't be profiting from uh, taking children and, and bringing them into their homes. I mean, it's, it's, it, it should be something that the state does. But as I say, there are wonderful foster care parents and there are probably wonderful privatized profit, profit foster care uh, providers. But there are also some that are just nightmares. And our story, Foster Boy, is about one of those uh, nightmares about this young boy uh, who's played by Shane Paul McGee, who's just wonderful. I mean, it's an award-winning performance. Uh, and, and, and he was put into a, a home uh, with another boy who raped, it's a true story, raped him for several years of his childhood. And uh, it's, it's an incredibly painful story. Um, and, and he's assigned to this lawyer to defend him. And Lou Gossett Jr. plays the judge who forces my character, Michael Trainer, to defend this, this young boy this young man and uh, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't believe, he, he looks at the black kid and sees a thug. He sees, he sees uh, somebody who doesn't deserve his time or his respect or his uh, skills as a, as a lawyer. And as he gets woke to this young man's life and the things that he's been subjected to, uh, the transformation. So this is really about, uh, young Shane Paul McGee, that character saving another person and, and waking them up to the prejudice and the ignorance of, of that very smart and well-heeled uh, lawyer. How do you stay in touch with the Stranger Things group and how closely do you follow the seasons and, and what's next? I don't know what's next, you know. I, I, I believe that they, they've started production now. I think that they're in uh, Atlanta, uh, hacking away at the at season four, um, I I follow some of them on social media and, and keep track of their lives. It's 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 fascinating and scary how quickly they're growing up. 
um, you know, one of the cast members can, the, one of those kids can grow a beard now. And <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with season four, you know, and, and how they, uh, how they handle them, them aging, you know, because what you don't, what you don't want to do is, is see it like happy days where eight seasons and they're still in high school, you know, the, 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 the Ron Howard's still wearing his letterman's jacket from season one and Fonzie's still, you know, you, we, the, the characters have to mature and grow. Otherwise, uh, it, I don't think it'll work. Very good, very good. And how busy are you with, with stuff right now? During this time, are you able to be creative and, and work on anything and move towards what's next? Yeah, I've been working on a short film with my daughter called I Am What You Imagine Is Love. Uh, she's been really busy. I'm really proud of her. She's got an album coming out called The Infinity Mixtape on October 8th. And I'm, it's, it's, I'm so happy to be able to talk about it because it's so good. You know, the music is, is so original. And, you know, she was, she's been inspired her, her whole child. She started singing at the Greenwich, Greenwich Street Music School in New York and taking piano lessons. And she, she, you know, was a young girl, was in love with Amy Winehouse. And so it's, it's wonderful to see her finding her own voice as a musician and as, a, as a, an actor in this short film, I Am What You Imagine Is Love. Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.